Um, can we make sport? Um, first of all, can people ensure, including the Collins, that they um, take their phones off the silent? And uh, if speaking, can we get as close to the microphones as possible that you can see? Um, we've had the batteries changed, so they are working a lot better than last time. Um, and hopefully people will all have sight of today's agenda. Item one um, is apologies, and can I first of all uh, welcome Charles Yankai to his, his new post with us. Charles, any apologies? <laughs> Apologies from Councillor Ian Graham, Right Honourable Jane Kennedy, Reverend Kelly Dr. Helen Lowry, Councillor Shelley Powell, Councillor Emily Sparrow, David Parr, and Eric Robinson. Any, Any further apologies? No. Item 2 is declarations of interest. Item 3 is minutes of the previous meeting of Combined Authority, which was held on the 24th of August. Uh, can I take them as a true and accurate record of this? Uh, four is just an update from where we were last time, and, and I know uh, Mayor Anderson is really keen that we spend as much time on this slot as possible to, to fill in the half an hour that we think that we've now got. Um, but just a few of the headlines. On September the 10th, uh, I went to London and had a, a whole series of meetings with officials and, and ministers from Treasury, DCMS, um, including the Secretary of State for Transport and others, um, so that we could discuss. <laughs> what we need in, in regards to further powers and funding for the city region. And in all honesty, and I can only speak as a fire, that it was a really positive set of discussions with um, those senior officials about plans such as with DCMS around our digital forefather spy. And indeed that resulted in a team from DCMS who are going to be visiting the city region before Christmas um, to look at what we're doing and to help us with the project. Uh, it was an interesting meeting, and we've just been discussing this with the Secretary of State for Transport, Chris Graver, um, where he and uh, ourselves discussed issues facing Northern Rail and problems with TPA, um, and particularly uh, the stuff that's happened with the introduction of the new timetable, which resulted in travel chaos for, for many commuters. Uh, he has signalled um, his support for cross rail for the north, as we call it now, which is being known as Northern Powerhouse Rail, and also for the city region to take further control of the Mersey Rail Network, which is something that we are only at the very early stages of even talking on at headline um, figures with him. But I will uh, ensure that myself and the leaders uh, of the command authority have any progress. And finally, we had discussions with the Treasury that have raised the ongoing issue that uh, Mayor Anderson and myself uh, again raised last night at a public meeting in regards to the Royal Hospital. And uh, I expressed on behalf of everybody, because don't forget, this has been built in Liverpool, but it's the healthcare of the whole city region of people from not just our area, but from beyond that use of our hospitals. So we expressed the concerns of people in the city region about the state of the new hospital, but also said that's not acceptable, that they found the solution in the West Midlands and not here. So uh, we will um, again ensure that through this campaign, which is about the Royal, uh, myself and Mayor and some others, we will ensure that we keep people updated uh, on any um, progress in regards to funding solutions for the hospital. Um, but I think the time has said last night is for the government to actually act and never mind about further discussions on what should happen. Um, again with um, Joe and Councillor Phil Davis I had the unique experience of meeting with John Luke on um, Wednesday I think it was from Royal uh, Deluxe and I think Monday um, we uh, look forward I think everybody's looking forward to the third and final installment of the giant saga which will be here in Liverpool and on the Gribble and that happens in just a couple of weeks time now and I think we're going to have huge numbers of visitors to the city region and to the city centre and those crowds could be uh, a million, million plus maybe a million and a half 
but the, it's likely that they will generate 80 million pounds for the local economy. And as leaders will know, it was the Commander Authority that helped to support uh, this uh, as a, a cultural initiative. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing those people coming in and seeing for themselves what the city region has to offer. Um, I think it's going to be bigger and better than anything. And Joe knows the story, I don't, but I tell all of that. It will be an emotional roller coaster for us all. On one day, um, I met with the Jewish Leadership Council and representatives of the Jewish community across the city region. And whilst many of our local authorities have signed up to uh, the IHRA definition of anti Semitism, and I thought it was an appropriate juncture where we ourselves um, commit to that. So, a uh, paper will come to the next uh, meeting of the Command Authority where we formalise this. Uh, I'm sure everybody will be concerned at the latest figures from the Community Security Trust which show that national instances of anti Semitism rose by 30% in the first six months of 2017 and they couldn't remain at record levels. So we all know this for our city region as a proud record of historically of welcoming people from all over the world, from all backgrounds and all faiths and that continues today. That's why uh, there's no excuse, not in our city region, but nowhere else for anti Semitism in any section of society and the IHRA definition commits the command authority to fight this pernicious and unacceptable form of racism. So um, the leaders, I think, are all very supportive of what we're doing on, on that particular issue. With that said, uh, we'll move on to item five, which is a rolling stock update. And the report itself, I think, is self-explanatory. But I'll ask uh, Councillor Green, Green Robinson, who's the chair of the Transport Committee, just to say a few words of support. Yeah, thanks for that, Steve. And as you say, the, the report is very much self-explanatory, but uh, if you'll allow me, I think it is really good news. Uh, it's obviously the product of some negotiations and dialogue we've been calling for a long period of time. Uh, and I'd personally like to thank everyone that's been involved in getting it to this stage, which obviously is all the members of the combined authority, uh, our officer teams, but also the delegation and representatives from the RNT uh, union, particularly some of the local reps. Who I think have really stepped up to the plate and, and come up with an agreement in principle that is really, really good for us to, to move forward on. It is obviously an agreement in principle, so there is more work uh, that needs to be done that we will be doing in earnest over the next few months, uh, particularly looking at the kind of la lasting financial uh, package to make this work, and we'll be focusing uh, for our contribution on those elements within the existing railway financial envelope, both in terms of savings, uh, but also the potential for additional charges uh, for users. But lots of detailed work that we will be doing. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to doing all that and sealing a full, uh, a complete agreement uh, that absolutely works for everyone, both users and staff on our rail network. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, Councillor Long. Not so much a question, uh, Chair, just uh, uh, reiterating uh, uh, Councillor Robinson's uh, views about the uh, uh, congratulations to people who have actually contributed a lot of time and effort and sweat and, and hard work to actually get this sorted out. Um, uh, and sort of leads to the point of it being sort of principle. That's enormously welcome. And uh, uh, so I thank you to Councillor Robinson for doing that as well. I just pick up on the observation in terms of the impact of the financing of this, that clearly this is a, a, a fantastic outcome in terms of rolling stock and, and making sure we can deliver that. But obviously it's the benefits within the Mersey Rail um, uh, area, the Mersey Rail franchise, so therefore the cost must also be borne within the Mersey Rail franchise as well. So that's a, that's a, a, that, that is a welcome piece of information as well. But overall, a fantastic outcome, and uh, hopefully we get to get it over the line. Thanks for that. And, and of course, there are financial consequences that need to be borne from this uh, principal agreement. But at least I think now we can start to talk about the substance of what the Combined Authority um, has been able to achieve. It will be the first publicly owned rail um, stock, rolling stock in the whole country. 
and with uh, the potential for further movement, um, we as a combined authority, I think we've taken the lead in transport issues uh, for the UK, so others may well be looking at us, obviously, in the future, we can talk about the substance of what we've been able to, to achieve. Um, Again, with that said, uh, are the recommendations set out on page 9 of the in this report agreed? Agreed. Item 6 is uh, the second report uh, which seeks to approve for Mersey Travel to dispose of the land at Back Gilmos Lane in Liverpool and Jill Kuhl is going to take us briefly through this report. Thank you. Um, the report asks for the permission from the Commander Authority to declare the land as surplus to sell land on as a disposal. Uh, what is the level of furniture? If there's any questions, I'm happy to save them. If I need my friends. Are there any questions? Okay, can we agree the recommendations are set up on page 15 then? Thank you. Uh, item 7 is a report that explains the approach and the scope uh, being used to reduce the local city region combined authority corporate plan for 2018 to 2020 and Kirsty Pierce is going to take us through this. Yes, yeah, so the paper sets out the suggested approach that we'll take to the corporate plan. Um, it will be a high level document setting out the focus of the work of the combined authority. Um, it will have an internal staff audience, but we're also suggesting that it's published on the combined authority's website and it's been produced and approved. Um, the paper asks for your agreement to the overall approach, um, but also asks that we take the actual plan to the October meeting um, for your approval then. Okay, are there any questions for Percy on that particular document? Um, okay, are we in agreement then for the recommendations that set out on page 21 of the report? The Combined Authority uh, appointment record that item 8 um, seeks approval of the appointment of Councillor Jill Neal, who is the Deputy Portfolio Holder for Inclusive Growth, Economic Development, Digital and Innovation to become a member of the ESIF Committee. And therefore, can we agree the appointment of Councillor Neal to that said committee? Uh, item 9 is public question time. And, um, we I have not had any public questions that I need to submit within the set time scale. So item 10 is uh, petitions and statements. And again, we've had no petitions or statements that have been submitted within the time scales of the deliberation at this meeting. So we'll go on to item 11, which is the minutes of the Transport Committee held on the 9th of August 2018. Um, Liam, anything on that? Oh, well, just as read, I suppose the only thing I'd point to is obviously the highlights in the meeting how we're continuing our campaign to city region to get two trains an hour from Lime Street to down to London Newton, because that's absolutely vital for our growth as a region into the future. Absolutely. Um, I think 12, therefore, so, was, so that amendment uh, there, just for noting uh, 12. Yeah, definitely. Can we confirm? But well, I think Joe, you already said it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Twelve is the minutes of the European Scrutiny Committee, and uh, can we confirm the minutes of that committee held on the 25th of October 2017, the 24th of January 2018, and the 18th of April 2018, and the 1st of August 2018, please. Great. Uh, given that the, uh, there's no uh, urgent items, the next meeting of the Command Authority will take place on Friday the 19th of October at 1 o'clock in the Authority Chamber.